Tooling size. Bigger is not always better, and when you're looking at a listing on either Amazon, eBay, or from another source, sometimes it's hard to get an idea of how much bigger the next size up is. I mean, typically they're labeled in inches. How much bigger is only one inch? You'd be surprised it's a lot bigger than you'd think. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So here I have an assortment of tooling for the mill and for the lathe and I basically have three different components. I have chucks, I have mill vices, and then I have angle adjustment mill tables. We're going to look at each of these individually and just do a little bit of a comparison as to how much bigger the next size up really is and also give some tips and information as to why you might choose to go smaller or choose to go bigger. Let's go ahead and start with the mill vise and discuss some of the differences. So the reason I'm doing this video is if you spend any time on any sort of forum or Facebook page where the focus is hobby machining, it won't take long and you will see the question of what size mill vise should I get for my machine? The same applies to other tooling and fixtures, and since I have several sizes of several different kinds of tooling, I figured we would discuss each one. So here we have two mill vices. We have a 3 inch and we have a 4 inch. Now, if you've not looked at mill vices before, that is probably astonishing to you, because it was astonishing to me many, many years ago when I started acquiring machine tooling. The mill that I had, it was actually a mill lathe combo, was fairly small, and at the time I purchased this three inch mill vise. I thought this was a good size, I was fairly happy with it, but I felt like I could use a little bit bigger clamping space. Now, the measurement on whether it's a three inch or a four inch or a five inch or an eight inch, whatever the size is, is based on the width of the jaws. So we have three inches here and three inches here. And most of these vices offer about the same clamping space going between the jaws. Now, in some cases, you will get a little more than the inch measurement of the width. But typically, this will hold a square piece that is 3 inches by 3 inches. And this will hold a square piece inside the jaws that is 4 inches by 4 inches. There's a massive size difference between these two. You can see that they are significantly different and then that one inch has made a huge difference. If you've got a really small hobby mill, this might be too big for your machine. If you've got a fairly nice hobby mill, this may be too small. As you can see, the difference is night and day when it comes to the size of these mill vices. And the same is true as we get to bigger sizes. If we go to a 5-inch vise, it's going to be almost the size of both of these put together. For my PM728, this is my mill of choice. Having 4 inches is a good size. It works very well. There's lots of things that I can put in it, and it fits on my mill nicely. This one is probably a little small for my mill. But I hang on to it anyway, because it does give me more options. Although most people typically only have one size of mill vise. So here we have two different milling tables. And if you're not familiar with this tooling, its primary function is to be able to adjust the angle and set it so that you can make cuts at a very specific angle. The size on these two milling tables, the smaller one is 5 by 7 and the bigger one is 7 by 10. Both of these are a Vivor product. Both of these are crank adjustment. There is a crank that fits into the back that allows you to crank it. And frankly, both of these are going back. I bought them both from Amazon. Thankfully, they both had free returns. And I'm not really happy with either one. The first thing I don't like is the crank adjustability on both of them is very, very sloppy. There's a lot of backlash. Now, I could totally live with that. That's just the nature of inexpensive tooling that you buy. You know, the machining on it is a little sloppy, so I can live with that. What I can't live with is you can see these pock marks 
in this smaller unit. And that is bad casting. That is bubbles that were in the piece of cast iron that this was made out of. Also on this corner, this had clearly been dropped at the factory. The packaging that was on that was not damaged. The paper sheet that is coated in oil that was living on top of this didn't show any signs of it being dropped. So clearly this hit the ground at the factory and whoever it was that dropped it felt that it was okay to box it up and ship it anyway. The other thing I don't like about this is the size of the T-slots. Now this is a 10 millimeter T-slot and everything that I have is 12 millimeter to 7 16 uh, Basically, I run the 7 16 T-slots in most of my equipment because they will fit into a 12 millimeter. What I do like about this is the size. The bed on my mill is only seven inches deep. And this is about the perfect size to fit on that bed and to be able to adjust things and get the angles that I'm looking for. This guy, the casting is definitely better. The finish is definitely better. The crank that allows me to adjust the angle is still poor. There is still a lot of slop. So again, I'm not happy with that cranking mechanism. I do like the fact that the T-slots on this are 12 millimeter. Well, at least they're supposed to be. I have some 12 millimeter T-nuts and wouldn't you know it, they fit in two out of three of these slots. One of these slots was not machined correctly and the fit is a little tight. Now, if I was going to keep this, that would be okay because the 7 16 T-nuts that I typically run will fit in the 12 millimeter even though it's not sized correctly. But this is massive. This weighs quite a bit. It really does not fit very well on the crossfeed table of my mill. And so it's more table than I really want or need. Now, a couple of things that are really nice about fixtures like these two is if you have, say, a mill lathe combo or you have a mill that does not have adjustable column height, the only option you have for adjusting your height is to extend the quill, which we all know the further the quill goes, the less accuracy you have. To adjust with tooling, so you could go collets directly in the spindle, you could go with a collet holder, that's going to give you several inches of adjustment. Or the next step would be to use a table like this. And in the case of my mill lathe combo, when I had it, having a table like this would have made a huge difference. At the time that I had that machine, I did not have either of these, so I did not have this height adjustment. But there are a lot of people running combo machines that do use a table like this because it allows them to lift the work a little higher and allows them to get the work closer to the mill head so that they can minimize quill stick out. I've ordered another one of these. I actually found one on Amazon that is this size, because again, this is the perfect size for my mill, but has 12 millimeter T-slots so that I can use my 7 16 T-nuts in it. I'm hoping that it is better quality than what either of these were. I've gotten a lot of import tooling over the years, and usually the quality is pretty good, but I was relatively disappointed with both of these units. So here we have four different lathe chucks, and it's amazing the difference that one inch makes. This is a four inch chuck. This is a five inch chuck. You can see that it is obviously bigger around because four inches, five inches, but it's taller, it's heavier. Then we go to a six inch chuck. And again, we have significantly increased the size of this chuck in every dimension. Lastly, we have an 8-inch chuck, and as you can see, comparing the 4-inch chuck to the 8-inch chuck, there is a massive, massive difference. I see people on some of these forums and Facebook pages saying, what is the biggest chuck that I can put on my machine? And that's not really the right question, in my opinion. What is the biggest chuck that I should put on my machine is a much better option. Typically, if you're wanting to put a chuck this big 
on a machine that is smaller, it's because you're wanting bigger capacity. You're wanting to be able to put things down the throat and have a bigger opening, uh, be able to clamp onto bigger diameter items, that kind of thing. The problem is this is much, much heavier than this. That is mass that the motor has to rotate. That is mass that the bearings have to carry. And that is a lot of mass that you probably should not be putting on a small machine. If you have a small hobby lathe, putting the biggest possible chuck you can fit on it is probably not a good idea. When I had that mill lathe combo that I spoke of earlier, it came with a four inch chuck. I upgraded to a five inch chuck and that opened up a huge world to me. It gave me a slightly bigger throat, at least for the depth of the chuck, and it allowed me to hold slightly bigger work. Now, had I gone to a six inch, that likely would have been the max that that machine could have handled. And I really think I would not have been gaining anything other than wear and tear on my machine for that particular lathe to go from a four inch to a six inch. The five inch was about the perfect size chuck. My new lathe, my PM1228, came with a six inch chuck and this eight inch chuck was also purchased at the same time. And the eight inch was the only option that they had for an independent chuck. And the six inch is what came mounted directly on the machine. And both of these are great chucks for that machine and they are a good size for that machine. Interestingly enough, I have several five inch chucks, this independent, I've got a six jaw self-centering and I've also got a four jaw self-centering. And more often than not on that machine, it's the five inch chucks that I end up running. Now there's a couple of reasons for that. One, they're lighter, they're easier to swap out. It's just a quick change. All of my chucks for my new lathe are D1-4. So changing out a chuck is a piece of cake. But the reason I like the five inch chuck is most of the stuff that I am cutting is smaller and having the smaller chuck does give me a little bit of an advantage in holding smaller work. Now, I know what you're saying. I can take a tiny little piece of brass or a tiny little piece of aluminum and hold it just as well in this chuck or this chuck as I can in this chuck. Well, that's not completely true. If you look at the flat surface on this, where it comes together, you're going to have a larger opening. So this will not hold as small of items as some of these other chucks. The other issue that I ran into, and this is the main reason I run a five inch chuck consistently on my new lathe, is the thickness of the chuck teeth. One of the projects I do regularly is extending the threads on a grade eight bolt. And this is a four and a half inch bolt and I've got to extend the threads to about here. With this six inch chuck, that was a little more challenging because of the head on the bolt. If I install the bolt and I get it past underneath the teeth, there is not a lot of space between the end of this tooth to the tip here. For the threading that I have to do, being able to get the tooling in and stuff, there was not quite enough room to be able to extend the threads and double them. On this four inch, I've got a lot more distance between here and here so that I can put in my runout gutter and be able to get tool clearance between the end of where I'm threading and the chuck teeth. And that's just one example. It's nice to have an assortment of chucks. It's nice that I've got an eight inch independent that I can put all kinds of things in. It's nice that I've got a five inch independent that I can put smaller things in. It just gives me more versatility. I hope this video answers some questions and gives you a better idea on what size tooling you may want to purchase for your mill or your lathe. Just because it's only an inch bigger doesn't mean that it's only an inch bigger. Going up an inch clearly increases the size by quite a bit. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them down in the comments and I would love to get back to you. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.